Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with Drunken Master Paul. Back in the Metal Jesus man cave once again. Dude, you found something very interesting recently. I did indeed. I was going through my, uh, my computer just looking for old files, and I found a recording of an interview I did with a bunch of the Sierra developers right after they got laid off in 1999. When the axe hit. I, know. I was there and got the splatter. It was crazy. I was working for a place called WorldStream, which was uh, kind of the first internet radio, a project by Ken Williams of Sierra. Mm -hmm. And me and my, uh, my friend Robert, uh, we had this show. And we were going to interview these guys anyway. And as I recall, we were going to have them on the show. And then the axe fell. And so this recording is right after they all got laid yeah. off. It's very raw, very real. And what's cool about this is that because it happens in September of 1999, I mean, you were just right there at the moment where these guys are having to deal with it. It's a really wild recording and it's a, it's a snapshot of history. It really is. When I listened to this thing, I thought, wow, this, this is pure gold. I'd forgotten about it. Right. I totally forgotten about this and then listening to these guys and you'll hear in the recording uh, how we joked about who was going to be the first to lose their uh, their severance package because they're all under NDA. Yeah, that's so. a, that's a good thing to, to realize with this is that, you know, it's so new at the time that these guys didn't know exactly what they could say, what they could talk about. I will say, though, as it goes on, you guys take calls yes. and some other developers call in from Sierra and they are like, I don't care. I'm telling my story. <laughs> yeah, they're not. It's under NDA. really cool. The other thing I want to mention about this recording, though, it is audio only, and this was at a time when you guys were really pushing the technology here in a big way. Remember, this is 1999. Absolutely. This is a time before you know most people had broadband, and so the context of WorldStream was that you'd open it up in a browser, and so you could hear the audio, but also we have a chat room running, and we could put up... Uh, um, pictures and video and take calls. So that's a lot to ask for the 288 motor. <laughs> it's, it's amazing to hear. So I mentioned that because yes, the audio qual quality of this is a little bit on the low side, but trust me, you know, a couple minutes into this, you're not even going to be paying attention because the, 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 the information is so mind blowing. It's so cool. This is an absolute golden peak into gaming in the 1990s. Yeah. And one of the, you know, toughest times that we went through at Sierra. Very fascinating. So we're going to roll that right now. We'd love to know in the comments what do you think about this because he actually has an entire archive of many, many more shows. Yes, I think we have, a, what, 24 shows that we yeah. did um, all over the place. Yeah, so please let us know if you like this. Go grab a beverage. It's the entire interview. Uh, enjoy. Cheers. We have in the studio with us Mark Hudgens and Dan Foy from the... Uh should I say the, from the Bab Five team? They're a team, man. And uh, on the phone we have Giannis Anderson from uh, Middle Earth. That's right. Steve Hi, Giannis. Make it yet. Steven has not made it yet, but we are also expecting Steve Nichols, who was the uh, the man who was the the creator of uh, the realm and uh, one of the main contributors of Middle Earth as well. Hmm. And uh, the reason we have them here tonight, Robert. <clears throat> Something funny happened. Just a, <laughs> something funny happened on the way to the gold date. Uh, yeah, Sierra Online uh, had a, their second reorganization in a year, and uh, a lot of products, a lot of uh, projects, uh, well, for lack of a better term, got the axe. A lot of, uh, of very strict business decisions were made that affected uh, some 105 people. But wow. luckily, in their wisdom, we're still here and sponsored by One.net. Go figure! So right. apparently they're not completely stupid. Oh, <laughs> they're not paying attention. That's, I think, more likely what it is. Yeah. Uh, special thanks, by the way, to uh, www.firstones.com and to Drazi Guy, who really helped us pull this together. Thanks, Drazi. Good demand. Good demand. Getting the word out, uh, letting people know that we're going to have a, a forum here tonight. And, you know, it's not about really bashing the company, although if you want to, you know, it makes great ratings. But it's, it's about finding out just what the hell happened. I mean, something like this goes down in the gaming industry or any industry, there's a lot of speculation, there's a lot of wondering about, you know, why the decisions were made, how it's going to affect people, and, uh, and just what the hell happened. So that's really what we're digging about here tonight. And uh, just to let you guys know, we've got people uh, on the show tonight that were... <clears throat> recently put on a permanent sabbatical and are not in a million years going to jeopardize any bridges or severance checks or anything else. So there's Unless gonna be they get really angry. <laughs> yeah, there's think always uh, that possibility. And of course, Steve's not with us yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put money on someone who's going to go off. I'm putting my money on Steve. Oh, yeah. Take, yeah. take the bets here. Take the bets right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Steven. Steven's great. He's uh, very outspoken. Mm. 
And since he's not on the air, we can talk all about him all the time. Oh, I thought the line just rang. That would be very ironic. That would be him. Yeah. So, uh, so folks, we're going to get all your questions answered as best we can. Uh, talk to the folks that it, it happened to and uh, the feelings there. But uh, just keep in mind there's going to be some stuff they're not going to be able to talk about and it's going to have to live with that. Even if you ask nicely. Real nicely. Unless you've yeah. got a lot of cash. They can be bought. They can be bought. Can you we, actually buy? We've ascertained that. Um, to a degree. We got to pay our severance. We might be a little more vocal about what's going on, but right now, you know, CRS has us in a vice grip, so there's very little we can say. Absolutely. And we are under NDA, and the contract's uh, valid regardless, so. So, there you go. So, it's not going to be any secrets passed along, but um, like I said, we want to figure out just what we can, uh, what happened. And, uh, and let folks know what's going on. The, b the uh, brief background is that, uh, like you said, this is the second reorg in about a year, about six months really, and uh, what's happened is they've shuffled all the different studios into three divisions, core games, casual games, and home, which so far so good, makes a lot of sense. Okay. Uh, however, they cut four games, two of which were pretty high impact, one of which might have been, and one of which uh, nobody really gives a rat's ass, but basically <laughs> Babylon 5 and Middle Earth were the big ones. Uh, Orcs was a promising looking game that might have gone somewhere, and of course Orcs. it's a Tolkien license, so Tolkien okay. fans out there. Oh, this is going to be like a Blizzard thing. And then of course there's, there's Pro Pilot, but yeah, what the mm. hell. Yeah, Pro Pilot bites the dust. Well, it bit the dust. And, uh, and then the other happens. big thing is that the Dynamics name brand went away, which is actually kind of a stunner, because Dynamics is the original Sierra purchase, and, and of course Sierra is now composed of about 20 different companies that got sucked into the mothership. Yeah, that, that surprised the hell out of me when the, the brand name went away. That is the granddad of them all, and a very, very successful uh, name brand for a long time, and coming off of a huge success, at least uh, critically, with Tribes. Yeah. Shows you no one's safe, which I'm, I'm still ducking and covering over here. <laughs> now, yeah, sooner or later, one that's going to realize that we do cost them some money, even if it is barely enough to pay for coffee. And uh, we're going to be history. But, you know, I wonder, will there be this kind of a groundswell? Of support to get the game dive back? I think it's going to be more like, you know, get the Who? bums out of here, but you know. Wait a minute, they canceled the show? No. Oh, Just your no. part, Dan. Oh. So that's, you can hang out till the end of yeah. the show. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's, you, let's you talk can... about the events that happened, because um, this happened to you about six months ago, and in that particular point, you were down in Oakhurst, California at the Yosemite branch, all of you, mm -hmm. and um, you got kind of escorted out of there by a bunch of guys in jackboots, sort of like what they do at Microsoft. <laughs> Our favorite How did was Captain happen? Hook, of course. Captain Hook. The, uh, Arr. Yeah, the, the security guard with a hook. Yeah, a lot of character there. you got to wonder where they get these guys. There's not that many people in, uh, in Oakhurst. They must have imported them from somewhere else. Maybe Fresno, Fresno I believe. Yeah. Fresno biker gang, bring them in. Get some train security the shirts. How did it go this time? What happened exactly? Well, this time, um, unlike last time, uh, we had a little bit of an inkling that it was coming. Um, Dan and Oakhurst, it was just a matter of coming in one morning, having an announcement that there was an all-hands meeting, going downstairs and basically being told within, you know, five minutes of sitting down, that's it, it's over, we're packing up, uh, you know, this, this many people go upstairs, we're going to give you a job, everywhere else you're SOL. <laughs> <laughs> um, Not to give you the bends. Yeah, this time, this time at least, um, the writing had been on the wall for a little while, although I don't think any of us really put all the facts together and actually came to that conclusion until maybe... Oh, a week beforehand when it really became kind of clear that we might be in some danger. Um, of course, nothing official, nothing confirmed. We just had some, some information that led us to believe that might be happening. So by the time they actually came in to, uh, to give us the word, it was pretty well known and we were all pretty well prepared for it. Uh, well, that's, that's something anyway. Yeah, in most some ways it's already packed up. <laughs> Say again, Jonas? Most people already packed most of their stuff up by that time. Well, had you actually even gotten unpacked yet? Um, excuse me? Did, have you even gotten uh, even gotten unpacked from the first reorg yet? Um, not really. <laughs> Black Show is just starting to settle into Seattle. I mean, I, I kind of liked it here. But it was uh, definitely a short stay. So. Wow. So um, how did you... Uh, get the word on this uh you on the same way same thing yeah rumors are flying all over the place for for the longest time um i thought actually up until the very end that there would be a chance to convince upper management that we were found in our conclusions and that the product would go forward at least with you know most of the team together so it was actually a bit of a surprise but um that was you know one of the rumors flying around that everybody was going to get the axe and i just didn't didn't want to accept that so but that's the way that it happens. Denial is a wonderful thing. Yeah, absolutely. I sort of <sighs> pictured them you know, lining everybody up and saying, everyone who's got a project going, uh, step forward. Uh, not so fast, Giannis. <laughs> uh, I kind of thought it went like that, but I'm glad to say you had at least what little warning you did have. But uh, mm -hmm. so it wasn't as ugly as last time. No, last time um, 
it was under the pretense of a of a monthly or what was it, a Havas interactive update with birthdays and other things like that. So Ooh. I have no idea. Havas <laughs> Interactive and, and by bringing that name up you invoke the name of the French people. Ah, uh, yes. Do you blame them for all of this, or do you think this is purely an American corporate decision? Oh, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't. We're not really involved with upper management politics, so I, I know that Havas has come in and bought um, what was left over from Sinden's reign and is cleaning house. I mean, doing what any uh, business-minded company would do. They're trying to streamline it and uh, make it profitable again, and this is the way they go about doing it. Now, I'm, you know, I can't. Personally, I don't think that they've done the right thing here, obviously, but you know that's not my decision to make. So. Yeah, I don't expect we're going to get complete agreement with their uh, current policies from our <laughs> guests today. No. But, uh, but I think all of you understand the business reasons behind it, which um, there's some argu argument to be made for. Uh, I don't think a lot of people out there in the uh, chat rooms really understand that in the last couple of years, Sierra has been somewhat, uh, you know, by pretty much a long shot, the biggest company in PC gaming by volume, by market share, and really hasn't made any money. Absolutely. I keep seeing posts on the internet everywhere going, yeah, these bastards have got money hand over fist and they're just trying to squeeze the last nickel. They're just trying to squeeze no. a nickel, I think. No, they point. haven't been and that That would be Steve, I think, who hasn't called in yet. <laughs> I just heard from him and he, I gave him the numbers, so I expect he'd be along shortly, but he might have just been getting off a plane, so he might be running to a quiet payphone somewhere. I don't know. Probably playing the realm on his laptop. Yeah, right? maybe. <laughs> <laughs> trying to put in an update. Well, uh, You'll be, uh, yeah, the year's under Ascendant with Sierra and um, was under uh, Chris McLeod, mm -hmm. and their uh, their whole plan was to grab market share at all costs. We were seeing Sierra products, you know, brand new projects hit the shelves at twenty nine ninety five, and yeah, they got a big market share, huge market share, but uh, <clears throat> no money. So a lot of the decisions that Havas has been making from a completely outside business standpoint, you can go, well, okay, well, it kind of makes sense, but that doesn't make it go down any easier for the, the people on the inside. And it's pretty arguable work. as to whether it really makes sense, in the, at least in the case of Middle Earth and, uh, and Babylon 5, which, and those two shows really are not in the same, those two programs are not in the same circumstance. No, no, no. no not at all. The situation between our product and Babylon 5 are quite, quite different, I think. No, I think probably, Giannis, you have just a little bit more that you might want to say about the whole thing compared to, to poor Dan and Mark just because of the way things went down. And the, the difference is that, that uh, Babylon 5 was canceled as a project and the team released. But Middle Earth is not canceled as a project. They just released the team, which is a little bit more painful, all I would right. think. We all suck, so you're fired. Yeah, and <laughs> in fact, I've seen your website, and uh, after seeing that artwork, I would have fired you, too. Yeah, <laughs> no, the six figures just uh, didn't go over well with no, Upper You Man. couldn't get the 128 awful. box of Crayolas? Come on, guys. <laughs> Yeah, update from the 64 to the 128, and uh, might have had a shot there. Might have. Jeez. Uh, for those been of you, watching South Park, you know. <laughs> for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, I can reveal your, your website, uh, right, Jonas? Mm -hmm. If you go to www.spottedpony.com slash Seattle slash layoff slash layoff.html, you will see one very, very humorous page on the... Uh, on the layoffs and, and what really happened, the true story behind uh, Middle Earth. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I, I, I have to say it's great to see you guys taking it in such great humor because I think I'd probably be uh, thinking about how to set fire to stuff about now. It, it, was, it was frustrating, to say the least. Oh, it, um, it was nice to see you guys, uh, at least, you know, I, you could see the, the bitter edge behind it, but it was a, a much better release or a release of the tension than... Than burning been. things down. Yeah, yeah burning things down or... <laughs> Walking across the offices with a high-powered weapon. Absolutely. Let's uh, focus on the Babylon 5 end of things for, for just a second. Um, everyone's familiar with Babylon 5, the show, I would think, or they wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> um, but Bab 5, the game, basically how far along was it? How close to completion is it really? Now, I know they're talking about shipping in May. Would that have actually happened had it gone on? Well, that's what we're looking at. Yeah, it seemed pretty solid to us anyway from our perspective. I mean, we were pretty well in touch with what we were doing, what we had left to do, and yeah, it looked good. Now, the real controversy in the decision about uh, Babylon 5 comes down to this. Sierra's stated uh, purpose of, of canceling the program is that they just felt it would not make money, and hence any money they put into it between it being about, what, two-thirds to three-fourths done to finish would be throwing good money after bad. From your standpoint, a little bit more money, it's completed, and you sell some games and make some back. That's the other argument. Do you see their side? How close do you think it would have been financially to breaking even or making money? Um, not having access to the um, 
numbers that they were actually predicting in terms of sales. I couldn't really comment too well on that. Um, I think the thing that changed, though, was kind of the um, attitude towards the franchise. Um, I know initially the idea was this was going to be a long-term franchise, so you kind of had to invest up front, particularly in our case where we were building an engine from scratch and everything else, and the idea was, okay, the first game is going to be expensive, um, but beyond that, uh, mission packs, sequels, etc., plus building the franchise and stepping out into, say, adventure games or real-time strategy games or whatever else within that license, that it would pay for itself essentially in that sense. Um, maybe not making as much money on the initial release, but it would set the stage for future sales um, at, a, at a greater return. I think somewhere along the line, they decided not to do that. Now, it may well be that it had something to do with the fact that we've been through, I think, about three presidents <laughs> since we initially started the project. I mean, it what? started with Ken Williams, and then we, I guess Mike, Mike Brochu was in there for a while, and now we have Dave Grunewski. And, I mean, they're all entitled to their own take on strategy, and I just kind of get the sense that somewhere along the line, either they forgot or didn't agree with or whatever that initial plan. What, what were they doing with that BAB5 thing again? I, I don't remember. Oh, what the hell. Well, let's talk about, uh, well, we're going to take a break here. Yeah, let's talk break. about uh, what changed between the inception of Babylon 5 to the end of Babylon 5 when we come back. Welcome back to the game diet. We're, um, we're kind of rolling in it this time. Uh, we've got the folks from uh, Bab 5 and from Middle Earth talking about uh, the changes changes being poof gone from uh, Sierra Online. We're talking about Babylon 5 and um, what may have happened and speculating a little bit on uh, some reasons behind it. Yeah, it looks like they took a little bit of a left turn at Albuquerque. Uh, I think um, when Babylon 5 started up, it would have been probably the first shooter sort of game in the Sierra lineup. And uh, since then, of course, Tribes came out uh, from Dynamics, uh, Half-Life from Valve, all under the Sierra umbrella, and things changed. So they went from basically probably using Bab 5 as a way to get into that business to unceremoniously dumping it. What was the evolution of that? What really changed in their minds about how viable that game is? You can just step right up here. <laughs> no, I'm not judging that one. Wait a second. I wish we had some insight into, into the way that thinking process worked. Uh, could have saved us a lot of trouble. Do you but, think uh, uh, the fan base of Babylon 5, as rabid as they obviously are, is big enough to support a game that is as big as Bab 5 turned out to be? Because certainly it's a very ambitious game. It's really tough to say. Um, I don't have good solid numbers on that stuff, but I, I would expect, I mean, and, and I don't think this is bragging or anything else. I think, you know, given the uh, the exposure of the franchise and everything else, I think it potentially could have been in line with, say, one of the Star Wars games in terms of sales, um, which I think would have been good numbers. But um, it's, it's hard to say. We were hoping that we would certainly grab some of the, the B5 fans who ordinarily might not buy that sort of a game, and that would, in turn, boost our sales. Um, additionally, the, the projections anywhere was that the European market was going to be very large, that you know, B5 is still on the air there, it's still very popular, in fact, it's, if anything, its popularity is growing in Europe, and at that, and in fact, I think at one point we were expecting we might actually sell more copies in Europe than in America. But, like I said, I don't have access to those numbers or where they get them or anything else, so I couldn't tell you. Well, you can make them up if you want. We came down. We do this all the time, <laughs> making stuff up. Well, the, another thing about the Babylon 5, I mean, there is a huge licensing thing. I mean, it's a, a recognized license. The series has ended, which seems to be to be a great window of you know, people looking around going, no more Babylon 5, I don't know what to do. Oh, a game! And jumping on that. Um, that along with, you know, expanding that into other games or into uh, expansion pack series, it seems like it could have been, uh, it could have been huge. I but, just want to say here that that is Paul's impression of a Babylon 5 fan and does not represent my <laughs> views. <laughs> so send your hate mail to Paul. To bill.gates at microsoft.com. All hate mail goes there. That's really me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so do you think it was just a, a cold, hard business decision then? Uh, somebody looking at a number sheet or uh, just didn't want to go there? That's my take on it, was that it was a business decision based on probably a number of factors, but probably more than anything else was just that, I mean, the number that, that they, well, the statistic or the uh, the fact that they stated, which was, we don't believe this is going to make the kind of money we need it to make, and so therefore we're going to cut our losses now. And we were just, you know, kind of caught in that. Now, Giannis, you're um, on a different part of the company. Did you, I mean, from your point of view, from outside of the BAB5 team, we're going to talk about Middle Earth here in a little bit. 
uh, about the BAB 5T. Do you any, see anything externally that might give you a clue on why this decision was made? No, but there was some speculation going around. This is, of course, completely unvalidated, but well, um, the merger, the current uh, absorption of Tierra by Havas might have given them an opportunity to write the whole thing off as a merger expense. So it would disappear on the books, and therefore it's a good way to, you know, shovel the loss under the carpet, so to speak. So they might not have... For example, they might have spent more on the product or just broken even, but or you know made money. I'm sure Babylon 5 could have done very well. I really was very impressed by the way the game looked. But the issue was is that whether it would have returned the three to one you know revenue or whatever that they were expecting to get out of a, a product, I don't know that it would have made that target, or at least they decided that it wouldn't have made that target. So the speculation is is because of the uh, merger, they used it as basically. Um, a hole to, to hide the loss instead of actually finishing the product. Interesting. Um, oh, one thing I do think we need to say here, Robert, is uh, for those of you listening, especially those of you who uh, know how to contact an attorney, nothing here is true. This is all a figment of your imagination. Um, take nothing here seriously. It's purely entertainment program. We're making this stuff to go along. Any resemblance to people living or dead or cartoon characters is completely coincidental. Purely fictional. Purely fictional. You're imagining this. You're in a realm-induced coma and just imagining all of this. Hey, we do have a, a caller on. Do you guys uh, want to take a bad five call? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Um, go ahead and bring in... Uh, hi, uh, who's this? Uh, this is John Walker. Oh, hey, John. Hey. Go figure. I, I have a feeling you work on the bad five, or did, excuse me. <coughs> yes, I did. So, uh, how you doing? Great. Um, just getting used to the idea of not having to work 60 hours a week anymore. Wow. That's hey, isn't it cold real. getting sleep and stuff, John? <laughs> yeah, I'm like seeing my wife and uh, my cats and, you know, all of that wonderful stuff that people who have lives do. Yeah, it's kind of settled into this kind of preview of retirement, and I kind of like it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, so you're not going to be going to work on Daikatana anytime soon? Actually, um, oh, probably not Daikatana. <laughs> but, uh, but I am entertaining any offers. <laughs> <laughs> so send your uh, send your uh, requests for um, for John's presence to uh, the Game Dive at one.net, and we'll forward it right on to him. Uh, John, what's your take on all of this? Well, uh, I think uh, Dan and Mark has done a pretty good job of summing up how we all feel about the whole situation. Um, obviously, very disappointed. Uh, I was a big fan of the show. Uh, it was one of the things that helped get my foot in the door in the first place to to work on the project. But, you know, it's very hard to second-guess numbers that we don't have access to. And so I don't know what information exactly they were using to make their predictions. Um, I probably wouldn't agree with them, but they've got to make the decision based on what they think is right to do for them and for the company and for their stockholders. And it's, it's sad, but that's reality. Well, the, um, you have a huge fan base going right now, and they're making a lot of noise um, about, you know, wanting the game to happen, wanting it to continue. Is there, uh, and I, I may be treading on, on you know, <laughs> on severed demolition here, but is there a chance that this could be picked up by another company? Or, uh, you know, and somebody wrote in the chat room, and this is, gives you a little bit of idea, the uh, <laughs> perception that your fans have of you, of you guys just getting together and making it yourself. Well, uh, <laughs> the, the official word from, well, I shouldn't say official, but... Uh, no, nothing is official on this show. David Grenowski was quoted, the head of uh, Sierra or Havas Interactive, was quoted as saying that they would be willing to discuss selling the current code base and artwork to another party. Um, obviously, that stuff is, all that data is of no use without the Warner Brothers license. Right. Um, as You'd have to ask Dan and Mark this, but uh, last time we knew, Warner Brothers had not commented one way or the other. But they're a business, and so I doubt that they'd be particularly opposed to the idea assuming that the numbers were there. Have you guys uh, heard anything or have any uh, comment you can make on it? I've um, heard of to Dan and Mark on that one. I'm, afraid. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I used eye contact to indicate that I was talking to Dan and Mark. That doesn't work real well with radio. <laughs> I understand that now. Uh, I think I haven't been doing this for a year. Um, I couldn't really comment on anything officially, but let's just say, I mean, I've gotten contacts from, I mean, all sorts of people, anywhere from, you know, somebody who's just sort of like claiming to be, you know, some kind of VC guy says, hey, you know, what's it going to take to get this game to, you know, people who work for other companies say, hey, I think I can push this up the ladder. But, you know, nothing nothing official at all. In fact, if anybody's going to make a move on this game, they should really need to be talking to Warner Brothers 
and Sierra first, because that's where the real money is. I mean, I think the team is enthusiastic enough that given a reasonable offer, we'd probably be willing to move ahead. But the hard part is locking up the license and all the game materials from Sierra. Yeah, you can't get away with calling this like uh, Bob Five and uh, <laughs> selling as many copies. <laughs> Not going to happen. Um, Barbarella 2, no. Well, actually, that might be kind of cool. We've even had some offers from uh, some guys out on the forum to, you know, pitch in and, and you know, save up their money and everything, and, <laughs> you know, the lunch money and all that, and, and you know, help us finish it. Uh, and, you know, hey, if they can get enough money, great. <laughs> but let's put it this way. I mean, it, it's a significant amount of money left to finish it. Um, not as much as the total, but there's still a significant amount of money that it would take just to, you know, to fund the basics that need to be done on it. Send your contributions to Mark Hudgens. Uh, care of the game diet, <laughs> and uh, we'll forward that right on to him. Uh, what's your Swiss account number, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> like I did get a good severance package. Wow, that's nice. Um, yeah, the, that's what the the fans are all asking for. They they want to see it, and uh, and moving on. That'd be cool. I mean, if all the fans would pre-order, you know, get a million million fans to all pre-order a copy, then maybe you could get some attention. But uh, yeah, that might be the only way to do it. But, you know, the other possibility, too, is, and I'm not going to discount this one, is that, you know, um, when the license does become available, and I don't really know what the conditions of that are, but eventually it will, um, another game company could pick it up and start from scratch. You know, it's not necessarily going to be us. I mean, there's always that possibility. Um, I guess the idea would be with us, if they looked at it and said, hey, okay, this makes financial sense to us, you know, in terms of what it's going to cost to get the license, what it's going to cost to get the code base from Sierra, and what it's going to cost to finish it, and it still looks good to them, then they might move forward, but there's very much the possibility someone say, hey, it's free, I, now I've got my own engine, I'm going to do my own game. Well, as you know, we have many, many hundreds of thousands of uh, game companies that listen to the Game Dive every week, so if you get a call, let us know. Hey, we do have a caller in, I want to ask a question about uh, BAB5, we're going to take that in, and then uh, after the break, we're going to talk a little about uh, Giannis in Middle Earth. Uh, hi, who's this? Hi, this is Zach. Hey, Zach, how you doing? Oh, good, how are you guys? I'm doing well. Are you, are you despondent, Zach? Oh, yes. I'm very despondent. Okay, step away from the ledge, Zach. I, I, don't, I don't think I can do it. Uh, no. Step away from the ledge. No, can't yes. do it. Okay, fine. I, I have this Babylon 5 watch here I was going to give away, but you can't have it now. Hey, what's no, your question? Hey, Mark, how's, how's it going, guys? That's going pretty good, Zach. Oh, you may know me. I'm Aries. How you, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I suspected that was who it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sagittarius myself. Oh. Ergo here. <laughs> so, yeah, I was just... I was really just got online as a stunned. I mean, probably just the biggest bomb is for you guys too. Well, yeah, I gotta admit. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to belittle your your grief, but you know, we're kind of sitting around looking for jobs too. So, yeah. <laughs> made it pretty easy to get them on though. They had lots of spare time. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, our schedules are wide open. We're available for weddings, bar mitzvahs, anything else that people want us for. <laughs> <laughs> Programming a bar mitzvah that'd be fun. And Mark is also a moyle. Few people know that about him. We'll get you costume in. So Zach. Uh, Got questions, comments? Just okay. want to air your grief? I was pretty much, uh, is Stuart going to be doing, release any more screenshots like he was doing beforehand, or? Well, Stuart got... That was pretty much it. Stuart, well, he didn't get in trouble, but he got a slight wrist slapping about releasing that information. Um, and it wasn't from Sierra, it was because it's, it's Warner Brothers copyrighted material. And um, although he may have more stuff, I think he's going to lay low on this one. He doesn't need the trouble, believe me. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're talking about that covering your butt thing again here. But oh, yeah, uh, I, do that. <laughs> yeah. I think initially we were all just ready to, to go, you know, pour our guts out. In fact, I did, and then I yanked it. Um, <laughs> but, um, I, I think we're all playing it a little safe now. Um, you can always contact him at his own email address, though, and who knows what he'll set you up with. But you didn't hear that here? Absolutely not. You have to get the express written permission of Major League Baseball to get, get anything done around here. So, uh, is that it, Zach? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, thanks a lot for calling. Yeah, thanks and all for all the support, too, long-term. Oh. We really appreciated it. And uh, who knows, maybe we can uh, stir the stew a little bit and get uh, some more attention to BAB5. One quick thing about the chat room here before yeah. we go off on yet another break. Yep. There's a whole lot of venom being directed once again at the suits at Sierra, which uh, amuses me to no end because I know those people over there. <laughs> and right up right up from the bottom guy who opens the door for you in the morning, uh, right up to Dave Grinowetsky, the president, there are no suits at Sierra. There's, <laughs> no, there's no one there who ever wears a suit. So you have to direct your venom at those denim-clad dudes with denim. the T-shirts that no, say denim. Sierra on them. They just point at the guys with the T-shirts and the bad haircuts, and you got your man right there. <laughs> and go, <laughs> but, but there are no suits at Sierra. No suits. Now, Havash, on the other hand, that's different. The French, they're, they're sharp. They look good. They're all wearing yeah, Armani. Yeah, theirs pretty sharp. Yeah. yeah. 
bunch of Armani guys there. Those are your suits. So there, there, if you want to talk about suits, there it is. <laughs> this is a game dive. <laughs> no, this is going wrong. This is going perfectly really wrong. No, we're going to come back in a couple go. of minutes, and we're going to talk to Giannis Anderson about the uh, fate and uh, future of Middle Earth. We'll be right back. Hey, we're talking about some of the folks in the chat room whose uh, names we recognize. Um, some folks from the UK. Jimmy Miller from the UK. From the UK. We have another UK person. Isn't it like three or four in the morning over there? I, I think it is. Yeah, I mean, everyone in the, in the uh, chat room, type in where you're from, where you are right now. I want to see where everybody is. You know, that just means that uh, Colin UK and MFU, they have no excuse. None! What's up with those guys? Some of our, our most loyal fans till we moved to Wednesday night, so we could have a weekend free. And I can't stay up that late here. Oh, excuse me. Who can stay up that late? <laughs> it's, it's too early in the morning for me. I, I can't have my oatmeal. I get all grumpy. No. <laughs> And we've got Grifter from Here we go. Sweden. Pakistan. Yeah. Pakistan. I'm not Holy buying God. that. Montreal. Toronto, I'll buy. Finland. Walmart. Somebody's living in a box at Walmart. Okay, great. Now, some of you people have been bashing pro bull riding, but uh, as you can see from the, uh, the excellent uh, graphics that we're placing up there, bull riding is actually a pretty cool game. Yeah, I think they've got to up the uh, adult rating on that. Although it could be argued that they're teaching bestiality to children with this thing. Cause, yeah, uh, that would be bad. Yeah, that's some weird stuff right there. Yeah, you won't find any of that in Middle Earth. Well, you know, in its defense, though, you can play the bull in that game. I mean, that's a saving grace for me, personally. You can play the bull? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a Bugs Bunny that's cartoon? That's feature, you know? Oh, uh, geez, you can be the bull. What we're be talking about here is that all week long, the media has been bashing on Sierra for dropping B5. And uh, every last one of them, it seems, without fail, has said, how can they drop this game while they're still putting out Pro Bowl writing? Well, Pro Bowl writing's not that bad a game, guys. It's kind of fun. Yeah, especially for the Cowboy right now. Uh, Yeehaw! Woo! Doesn't uh, really uh, excuse dropping B5 necessarily, but let's not blame Pro Bowl writing. It's pretty cool. Mm, yeah, but then we thought Trophy Dust wouldn't sell either. Hey, we've got uh, Steve Nichols has made it into the house. Hey, Steve. Hello. How are you doing? Could be worse, I guess. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> you're, you're still breathing. <laughs> how, how exactly <laughs> could it be worse? <laughs> Somebody's beeping at us. Somebody's backing up. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Who, okay, Steve, you're still in? Uh, Giannis, you still in? Do we have Giannis? No, he's gone. We, we've lost Giannis. Yeah, he got tired of hearing about Actually, Giannis and I are the same person, you see. Oh. Uh, either that or you're a tag team yeah, and it's your turn. Yeah, we in the same room together, did you? Right. <laughs> no. No. So you're wearing a little cape now, Steve? And That's right, a little cape. A tutu as well. <laughs> Ooh, oh, the red soccer uniform, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Hey, you making fun of me, buddy? <laughs> well, I would never do that, Steve. Yeah, <laughs> we are. <laughs> hey, we're um, we're talking to um, Bab Five guys. Talk about uh, Babylon Five and what happened with uh, with that in the Sierra Reorg. And uh, now we're going to chat a little bit about uh, Middle Earth. A uh, little bit different situation from uh, all reports. But uh, Steve, you want to give us your take on uh, on what happened and uh, why you think it went down? Uh, well, I can give you a, in a nutshell, of course, not without spilling too much for Sierra to come breathing down my neck about it. Well, but, you weren't on, but we uh, we told everybody that there's no one on the show that's going to even come remotely close to jeopardizing severance pay, bridges, getting sued. Nothing like that's going to happen. Besides, everything on the show is complete imagination. Well, I, I think Giannis was kind of on the tightrope there, uh, mm -hmm. thinking about it, but uh, he pulled back. Yeah. <laughs> well, good for him. He's probably a smart guy. You know, he's going to pay your salary for a while there. It's pretty handy. So, so we let them know that already. So, Well, let me tell you. Um, all I can say is that uh, management didn't like the design of the game. Even though the previous management did, the new management didn't. And they didn't get along well with the team in trying to get across those changes, and we all got fired. <laughs> That's a nutshell, really. But, yeah, no, I think, <clears throat> just one point to make, not to interrupt you, Steve, but um, I think this is a, a problem that we face, and it's not really anybody's fault, but the thing is, our projects were developed in another location by a different management who had a totally different amount of buy-in on the project. We were moved a thousand miles, we were kind of dropped on the doorstep, and we didn't really have a whole lot of time to really sell anybody on what we were doing. Yeah, that's for sure. There certainly wasn't a rapport with management, do you think? <laughs> yeah, we kind of felt the same way, actually. I mean, there yeah. was a constant gap between management and us. We never really got to present what we were doing, and because a lot of the design that we had put together was questionable, unless you fully understood it, um, I think that probably had a lot to do with the situation that uh, how things ended up. Would you go to meetings and they'd say, now, now what are you working on again? Yeah, what meetings? 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 Yeah, meetings? yeah what, what meetings? Oh, meetings? Sorry. You'd have to have a meeting to say nothing, really. Oh, yes. <clears throat> sorry. Ooh. That's why uh, when we talked to uh, Sierra PR, they said, you want to talk to who? Those hillbillies from Oakhurst? 
Uh, no, never mind. We won't have anybody on. Don't worry about it. Don't listen to the show, and especially tell the lawyers not to listen to the show. <laughs> right. Although I think it's taped, isn't it? Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, but they they got to find the archive first. I think it's uh, it's, it's somebody impersonating me. I'm not really Steve. No, no, no really, I'm not. Not Steve. No, there's absolutely no way to verify that we are actually who we claim to be. No, I did. You know that that I'm a, a great voice talent, and this can all be mixed down with separate channels. Isn't that great technology today? Just be sure to disguise our voices. Uh, I am. In fact, I'm not even here. I'm just a creation. Yeah, this is all scripted out earlier. Right. And for you people in the UK, you've already heard the show eight hours ahead of time, so you already know it's coming. <laughs> well, that, that's the nutshell, really. Management didn't uh, didn't like the game, so they put it they put it on hold and basically say, hmm, I think it will redesign it. That sounds good. And, uh, you know, that's just what they're doing. I hope that uh, their new design will be much more uh, much more nice for the mass market. I hope that does uh, work out for them. Nick Tolkien, isn't it? Ooh. Well, no. be, that, that can be damned all, for, for all I care, I guess. Uh, it would be great if it was Tolkien, but uh, if it isn't, you know, at least it'll reach the mass market, right? E all right, yeah. come on. No. <laughs> at least it'll reach the mass market. Right, all right, all right. So does AOL. <laughs> there you go. So... Yeah, so that's, um, is that, did they give you any ideas or any uh, insight on why or anything they... Oh, sure, sure. Well, they had about a 10-point list uh, or a list of 10 points that uh, they really didn't like about the game. And they, you know, we tried to debate the issues with them and there wasn't a lot of debate to be had. I think they had made up their mind that uh, that the game was just hopelessly, uh, hopelessly garbage and uh, didn't want to deal with those particular issues. Even though they brought them up, you know, and kind of kind of gave information to us. We couldn't really deal with them and, and debate the issues and settle anything. Were there were there any uh, major sticking points? Um, I mean, the game's been in development for a while, and uh, the fans know some stuff that's coming down the pipe, some that isn't. But was there anything that the uh, like the fans could relate to that they didn't like or uh, some stuff you can talk about? As well, far as last time I said something like this, I do believe I said it on the IRC chat the day that we all got the can, and now Sierra made it very clear I shouldn't say such things again, or else I'll get in big trouble. Well, then, we won't go there. Yeah, sadly, even though, uh, even though I'd like to say it, sadly, I don't want to... I don't want to not be able to feed my family, man. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I can understand that. Real um, code for food. We, we, yeah. <laughs> we but uh, I guess it yes, it's just messed up. It's just messed up. I think it's, uh, I think everyone there can agree. Right, Mark? We, oh, uh, I would never agree with you, Steve. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Well, um, there's also a company down uh, in your old stomping ground now. Oh, yeah, Codemasters. Mm -hmm. Codemasters took over the Yosemite site. And, yeah. uh, your old buddy Mark Zekiel is uh, looks like he's back in charge of the realm again. That's exactly what I hear. That's uh, That's been quite an interesting development, I think. Uh, I hear that they're going to make a, a pretty significant commitment to upgrading that game. That sucker's have been a big boomerang so far. Yeah, it sure has. It's been it's been the game that won't die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it tried to die a few times while I was on it, and that was years ago. Yep, they wanted to stomp it out years and years ago, and they just couldn't get get all the pieces stomped out. Sadly, it keeps growing. It's like a fungus, really. <laughs> and uh, the the fungi of the the community keeps coming back, and that's what keeps uh, keeps it going. And we're seeing that kind of groundswell with Babylon Five, and to a, a, a degree with the Middle Earth earth as well now middle earth isn't dead it's going to be redone apparently but bad five is essentially dead yeah that's a shame yeah do you think um the game looked really good i mean it looked awesome and from my from my point of view but you know some things going on there what can you do the that's combat engine was pretty kick-ass just some serious graphics in that sucker and the physics were really nice I and mean, i've seen it for two e3s now yeah, and, it's uh, coming along real nice. It's I'm a little nice surprised off. that uh, they're not doing something with that engine uh, now that it's essentially done. Well, I guess they. Well, they may be doing something with the engine. You just never know. I'm you know, thinking. They, they could um, certainly try. Sure. I'm thinking that engine would go good in bull riding too. Really. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, some really cool uh, explosions. Bulls exploding. Yeah, yeah. yeah cows in space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cows in space, 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 space. Well, I won't bag on bull riding for sure, but uh, it's a fine game. I'm most certain it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the. Um, I mean, you are the creator of the realm. Is there, uh, I may be crossing the line again, but have you been approached to go down and, and take over that thing? I, I have been talking with them uh, about such situations. I haven't made any, my mind about anything, so there's a lot of opportunities, and that's one of them. And that's going to be of interest to uh, those of you out there who uh, come in here from the realm. Uh, I've been watching the uh, realm message boards today, and there's been this uh, pretty big outcry and a huge debate over Stephen coming back and, and stepping into the realm again. And the uh, guy, it's, it's about 50-50 right now. Some of the major league hackers don't want you back. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. Uh, yeah, you know, they're well, tired of fighting Kerry. I don't think they want two of you against them. <laughs> yeah, they'd cer certainly lose then, wouldn't they? Yeah, I get that, that double uh, pincer movement happening in there pretty much toast. Mm. Hmm. Yes. 
Well, I haven't made up my mind there, so I'm sure I'll be making my mind up real soon now. Well, good. That's, uh, <laughs> it's good to know there's opportunities out there. I'm sure with the uh, the amount of talent that was just let go from Sierra, the uh, other game companies have got to be uh, got to be drooling, thinking, "Oh, we can get some people now." Do you, uh, do you kind of see that in the market, or uh, or not? From my point of view, yeah, there's there's no end to opportunity. People just trying to gobble you up. Have you guys seen that on the from your end as well? Yeah, I've gotten a few uh, approaches. Um, actually. From more from television than actually from the gaming industry right now. Oh, don't don't go into broadcasting, man. Trust us, you'll wind up looking like us. Yikes! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Uh, hey, we got a, another caller coming in. You guys want to take it? Uh oh, all right. I have no idea if this is gonna be a bad five or a Middle Earth call, but we're just gonna go with it. Hi, who's this? Hi, are you talking to me? Uh, is there anyone else? Uh, hello? Hello. Hi. Hi. My name's Russell Williams. Um, Hi, Russell. Oh, no last names. Okay. Uh, All right. You calling about uh, Middle Earth or Bad Five? Or you Bad Five. Game dive? Bad Five. What's up? Um, well, uh, I was just wondering if there was a place where the people who are in the, in the Seattle area had their uh, resumes up on the web. So, uh, you know, uh, I, 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 I might need a programmer. <laughs> it would be nice to, uh, nice to see you guys. So you're trying, you're watching out for us. You're trying to get these guys a job. Well, I saw, I saw the uh, Bad Five game at E3, and it looked pretty good. So, so uh, looks like somebody's got some talent there. Are you uh, like an HR person for a major Northwest software company that will remain nameless but is absolutely mammoth? Boy, I used to work at such a company. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, no, I'm, 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 I, I left that in fact particular company to start my own little company. So I'm oh. both the executive guy and also the guy who. Uh, did, Cleans toilets, so uh, <laughs> often one and the same. Especially if you're in marketing. Yeah, well, we've got a suit in the closet that we bring out and trot around on a coat hanger to do our marketing for us. Dust falling off of it. So uh, I was just wondering if there was some place where I could find your resumes on the web. Well, you can get contact information or a place to advertise the position that uh, uh, site Jeff Reitman has hooked up for us. Uh, it's www.wackygamer.com. Okay, slow down. Let me try to get that one in. www.wackygamer. Fitting, isn't it? Yes. Dot com. That's right. Okay, there you go. And besides, aside from that, uh, a lot of us will be at the Sputnik uh, thing tomorrow night. Oh, really? Yep. Okay, then I'll see you there. The Sputnik thing? Yep. What, uh, the, what the hell is the Sputnik thing besides something that circled the Earth two times and then dropped like a rock? That's the local... Uh, Game developers meeting in Seattle. Oh, I think we're not in on that kind of thing. Just... You guys gonna wear like a blue cap or something to let us know who you are? <laughs> we're a blue armband. Everyone wears a blue armband, and and I guess the uh, Middle Earth guys would wear what? Uh, um, brown and green. Everyone will know. Everyone will know. Okay. okay great. Also, I appreciate the information. And if uh, if anybody wants to contact uh, any of the Sierra people or any of the people that are on the show tonight, feel free to email the Game Dive at one.net, at w-o-n.net, and we would be happy to pass on your contact information. Thanks a lot for the call. Thank you. Bye. <sighs> Welcome back to the Game Dive with uh, Paul and Robert, your game gurus here. And we have on uh, on the show uh, Mark Hudgens and Dan Foy from the now defunct Babylon 5 team from Sierra Online. And also on the phone we have Steve Nichols and Giannis Anderson, who were on the uh, Middle Earth team before they, they were... Uh, unceremoniously, uh, hang on, coffee, wait. Our next word shop, clean off. Clean off. Thank you, that's what I was trying to say. Is that what they mean by severance? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Ooh, sever this. Yeah, some, uh, now, uh, Steve, we were talking earlier, um, were you surprised by this? Uh, Dan said that they kind of saw the writing on the wall coming down the pipe, but uh, you guys seem to have been a little more surprised by it. Who? Who? Maybe I'm surprised by it. I don't know about that. We we felt it coming for a while. At least I've always been paranoid. But then again, that's what happens when you work at Sierra for just about eight years. You get paranoid, always thinking somebody's out to get you. But anyway, that's because they are. Well, that's well. Anyway, <laughs> I won't touch that. But anyway, you're you're right. They are. All right. Anyway, so yeah, basically we saw it coming for a while. A couple of weeks before, for sure, we were looking at it, saying, hmm, they're going to do something really nasty. And you know, the dead giveaway was that last week when they say, you know, you really don't have to come into work. There's nothing you should be doing here right now. <laughs> oh. So, you know, when they said that, it was like, hmm. hmm. When that happened to them, we got that. Uh, drastic. So that's when people started getting their resumes together. It was kind of a kind gesture on their part to let us know a little bit in advance. Yeah, unlike the uh, previous reorg this year. Oh, we knew about... Uh, Come on, about three hours before, as you saw the Pinkerton guard outside. Yeah. Captain Hook. So did you guys manage to like, klepto any office supplies on your way out? Um, absolutely not. None. See, none whatsoever. <laughs> and even if I did, I certainly wouldn't admit it on the air. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
<clears throat> These are my notebooks and stuff. <laughs> this is my brand new Pentium 350. <laughs> yeah. See my name? Office supply. See my name carved into the side in blood? Hey, we've got some people calling in. You guys up for taking some more calls? Oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead and bring the first one in, Dan. Hi, welcome to the game dive. You don't drink light beer, do you? Uh, no. Okay, great. Then you can come in. What's your name? Uh, it's Jeff Reitman from the Bat 5 team. Oh, hi, Jeff. Jeff. Jeff isn't old enough to drink light beer. Oh, okay. No. My mommy and my daddy, Mark Hudgens, don't let me drink oh, light beer. It's a duel for you, pal. So what's oh, up? Sorry. I just called in uh, just to say hello and uh, just want to thank everyone for coming out and thank you guys for doing the show and stuff. And I figured uh, I didn't want John to be the only one to call in. I have to <laughs> outdo John at every step. So. And you guys aren't, aren't doing too much these days, so you're just listening to this weird show on Wednesday night. I listen to everything on the net now. I have nothing better to do. <laughs> and I thank Sierra for paying for it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> hey, such a deal. So, uh, your take you on... You can get laid off and listen to real audio shows all day. <laughs> for only twenty nine ninety five. And I also called in because I had a suspicion on why we got laid off. Okay. Dan can back me up on this. Okay. Lay on. Remember back when we were in the original building, Dan? Yeah. And we used to play Half-Life? Yeah. And we put the beat down on some other people on the floor? Oh, yeah. That was the beginning of the end, my friend. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, we, we didn't we didn't earn ourselves, didn't make ourselves uh, too welcome when we started doing that. One yeah, let there. the marketing guys win. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lesson to be learned. <clears throat> Lesson learned. Anybody at Sierra, if they play Half-Life with the marketing guys, let the marketing guys win. The only way you can do that, though, is to kind of like step away from your machine for about a 45 minutes and just let them shoot it because they pretty much suck. Uh, I don't want to say time. that publicly, but yeah, I'll yeah, agree with you. I'll say it. They suck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's my show. I can say it. I don't. I don't have to, have to answer to him. Now, I only knew one uh, real hardcore gamer that was in PR or marketing over at Sierra, and that was Ken Schram, and he got reorged. Hey, you gotta, everybody you gotta got to get rid of the core gamers in your in your organization. I mean, when you're making games, you <clears> can't have those damn core gamers in there. Yeah, what the hell's up with that? <laughs> Can't have that. They don't know how to make shiny things. They can't make cool box art. They can't make Pepsi in a box. No, they can't. Oh, they can't. Okay, well, uh, thanks for calling in and commiserating with all of us. Uh, no problem. Have a good one, guys. Thanks. See you later, Jeff. I think there's an opening on the uh, Bab 5 card game, though. Uh, <laughs> that could work. I'm going to get involved in that. Okay, let's go ahead and bring on another caller. Hi, who's this? Oh, it's me. Hi, me. How you doing? Oh, I'm you, sorry. This is, um... You can't be me. I'm me. Oh, um... Uh, I'm Freddie in Furryfoot. I was running for mayor in Middle Earth, and I have a question for Steve. Oh, how about that? All right. Ask away. Um, how many of the fan ideas were used, roughly, do you think, in the project? Boy, I would say that we listened to uh, and implemented most of the, the good fan ideas. Of course, what's good would be what's <laughs> determined with good. But, yeah, we, we definitely listened to and used the dev board as a good resource, although at, at some times there wasn't a whole lot of... Uh, of two-way communication there. We were uh, starting to get a little antsy with some of the ideas and didn't want to blur them all over the place. But yeah, we did listen quite a bit. W wouldn't you say so, Jonas? Uh, sure, although I can't hear about half of what's being said because my connection is... Oh well, then we won't talk to you anymore. Anyway, yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I agree with the interview. That's right. Yeah, I, yeah, we did use a lot of the ideas, actually. Um, I would say uh, most of the good ones made it in. Some of them didn't think like character persistence, where the guy wants you to stay logged in all the time. You know, some of those just couldn't be done. But I, I like the ideas anyway. But we couldn't get them all in, sadly. What was one of your favorite fan uh, suggestions that you got to use? Boy, what was one of the favorite ones? I think somebody outlined the uh, character psychology system before we started actually dealing with it. We were we were thinking about it, but uh, somebody outlined it pretty good. That was a, that was a fine idea. Um, a couple other a uh, couple other pretty pretty good doozies, but. That's, uh, that made it in for sure. So, so uh, they were listening to you. They tried. They were there for you, man. It was all about the fans. It was all about the fans. No, it's all about the dollar, my friend. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, I tried to do a different angle here, but... <laughs> You're right. Okay, fine. All right, thanks for calling in. There was uh, one idea in Middle Earth that I thought was extremely cool and um, and should have been implemented on other massively multiplayer games, but no one had the balls, and Middle Earth was going to do it. And that's that when you died... You died. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think that's a fine idea. Kill them all, I say. Let God sort them out. But at the think? same point, it probably did not endear you, <laughs> endear you to the management because uh, I can just see the complaints at uh, customer service right now. I paid $49.95 for this game and now I'm dead. <laughs> what the hell is up with that? Restore my account. Sure, you wouldn't be dying as much as you do in, say, EverQuest, for example. You know, a problem <laughs> with making a mass market game where people who have six months invested in their character, you know, do something stupid and their character dies, but... We took every precaution in our design to make sure that that would never happen. And the only time that 
you would actually lose your character would be in maybe a heroic fashion or when you are just really, really stupid. You would have to be pretty dumb for that to actually happen. What, dumb people playing a massive multiplayer game? No. <laughs> well, hopefully after playing for a couple months or whatever, you'd be experienced enough to stay out of the places where you could get permanently killed. So uh -huh. yes, it would add attention and a, an excitement to the game that I don't think would exist um, without it. Well, uh, I think it's a great idea myself, and but <clears throat> I guess we're not going to get to see that one, are we? Well, you may in other online games. You just never know. Oh, uh, which, uh, which begs the question, are you going to continue on in the world of massively multiplayer and online games, or are you done with that? No way, man. It's great fun. I'm going to keep doing it. Very cool. You heard it here first. And first. we're going to kick Sierra's ass as well. <laughs> there you go. Here <laughs> oh, we go. Did I say that? I'm Light sorry. Him up. Words. <laughs> no, we'll edit that out for the archive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're going to turn the volume up right about there, I think. Just to... <laughs> Can you put a little reverb on it? Sure. <laughs> uh, uh, mm. oh, I'm give no. Steve a folding <laughs> chair to hit someone with. <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. so, uh, right. Shall I go ahead and haul another call in? All right. Got All right. Him. Bring him on in. Hi, who's this? Joseph. Hi, Joseph. You know they named an aspirin after you. Uh, no, sir. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. There must have been another Joseph. That was the saint. Not a problem. What's up? Uh, my question's for the Babylon 5 team. Okay. Um, well, actually, it's for everybody. We're, we're on the uh, on the first one's website. We're uh, trying to get a, get a thing together, get some support from people to show so we can get this game back together. Is there any way that we can get a, an approximate number of people that are on right now so we can kind of have something to go by? You're trying to figure out how many people are out there on first ones? Uh-huh. Or not on the first ones, on the talk spot, or on, on your uh, oh. game dive right now. You think, oh, how many are on? Uh, yeah. We have 8 million people in here. Are you kidding me? No, actually, we have about uh, 300 people logged in, but I don't know how many people we have listening to audio. On audio. It's usually about two or three times more. So we got about a thousand people in here listening. Okay. All right. Right now. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Not a problem. All right. Thank you. Okay. Somebody fishing for staff? Guess, uh, you know, Sierra wouldn't listen to any of these petitions anyway. It's a nice gesture, though, but I think they're pretty much running them right into the land file. Well, you yeah, know, actually, Steve, I think what a lot of these guys are trying to do with it is um, show other potential developers uh, who might want to, well, not developers, but other publishers who might want to pick up the game that there is a fan interest in it. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, especially for uh, for Bad Five. Uh, yeah. I, that's really stuck in the take. Why would they can it? It's madness. They're mad. that They're passing the crack pipe. What's going on? I just don't understand. Well, there's also the uh, the ever-popular Boycott Sierra. We have uh, An Anla Shock in here saying, Boycott Sierra. Now, how many times has Sierra been boycotted in the past year? What? I've uh, counted them, 37. 37 times. And, and they're uh, still in business. It's amazing. It's, it's but incredible. they're getting smaller. <laughs> yeah, they're shrinking <laughs> rapidly. They are. <laughs> they are that. They're whittling us away. <clears throat> Welcome back to the Game Dive. We're running the ragged edge of disaster tonight with uh, <laughs> a bunch of guys who just uh, kind of got handed the, the door keys here. This is a team from uh, Babylon 5 and from Middle Earth, uh, two projects that were uh, let go from Sierra Online's reorganization uh, this week past. And uh, we're kind of getting the scoop, kind of figuring out what the hell happened, uh, the take from the inside on uh, why this happened, why... Two projects who were de that was destined to be very popular got uh, got shut down, and uh, we're taking your calls right now to find out what your take is on it. Uh, have anything to say? Come on in and give us a call. You guys ready to take another call? Oh sure, sure. Okay, go ahead and bring them in. Hi, welcome to the game dive. You have ID? Oh, it stops him in the tracks. Oh, uh, I left my car, dude. Hi, who's this? <laughs> this would be Marcel. Marcel. We have another French guy calling in. Except he's dead. Okay, I who's think the next he's, person? Uh, walking in the wind right there. Ah, uh, who's this? This is Jason in Chicago. Hey, Jason in Chicago, how you doing? Oh, I'm all right. I'm just over here on Sierra's website looking at these fantastic screenshots of professional bull rider. Oh, aren't those lovely? <laughs> Don't you think our screenshots of pro bull rider are better? Oh man, yeah. Yours, <laughs> yours have it a little bit more accurate. I used to live in Texas. Ooh, <laughs> uh, I share that misery with you. I was born there. You know, with a website and a business license, you could be rich. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take you to shake the accent? Yeah, so, well, you know, I only lived there for a little while, didn't like it, I'm glad to be out, but uh, really horribly upset about the whole thing with Sierra Canning, you guys. Looking yeah. at the stuff, the demos that I saw from B5, it looked very, very professional. Well, thanks, we try. Yeah, really. Yeah, very nice, would have bought it, still want to buy it. 
Well, if we can uh, raise enough consciousness tonight, maybe we can uh, get, uh, I don't know, Ion Storm to buy it, or uh, who else would we buy? Eidos could buy it. Oh, I'd any... love for another company to pick it up, and I'd buy a lot more of their products if they did. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, there's an opportunity here for someone to be a lot of people's hero. Yes, well, that's the whole plan. You see, uh, on, over on First Ones, we've been discussing how to go about doing this, and it looks like there's only a few things that we, the buying public, can do. And a boycott, you have to have a lot of numbers to get a boycott. Yeah, those are real effective, aren't they? And, you know, yeah. frankly, a boycott, I don't, I mean, yeah. I, I appreciate the, 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 the gesture and everything else, but a boycott won't do anything for Sierra in terms of trying to get the game continued. You can use it to, dis, you know, if you want to register your displeasure that way, that's fine. That's your way to do it. But boycotting them won't make them start the game up again. That just won't happen. No, well, they, the, the, it looks like the decision was made pretty much from a, a cold business standpoint. They looked at some numbers and went, this can't continue. So it's by boycotting the company, that's not really going to have an effect. If it was just a, a creative decision where you don't think this game's going to be any good, then you might get their attention that way. But personally, boycotting game companies is, I don't can think of any time when it would, was ever effective. Now, if you guys can contradict me on that, by all means, it's just my show. Well, boycotting alone certainly wouldn't do it. The idea is to say that I'm going to not buy any of your games and encourage everyone else not to buy any of your games until it's released to another publisher and also letter writing campaigns to other publishers to pick it up, releases to uh, the different online magazines would help. You know, I don't think there's I don't think there's any problem with getting Sierra to release the game. I mean, obviously they've got some price in mind for it. I have no idea what that would be, but all indications I had is that they're perfectly willing to discuss with anybody uh, the idea of selling it. I mean, at this point, anything they make on it's gravy. Um, so the real trick, actually, is convincing or, or getting some other publisher to pick it up. And I think the uh, the fact that we have, you know, a thousand people listening to the show tonight and at least half are, uh, are BAB5 people, when normally we have, like, the janitor and uh, and Dan in the, the chat room, um, it really goes to show that there is... <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Dan. He just gave me a lovely little wave. Uh, <laughs> goes to show that there is a, a big support base for this game and showing other companies that there is a potential here. And the game's all, you know over half done. Hello, pick it up and, and build it. Um, there's a potential here, and you guys need to show that. Now, somebody else we have on, on the phone here, um, Steve Nichols and uh, Giannis Anderson, who were involved with uh, The Realm from Sierra Online, that game just would not die. And, uh, and check me if I'm wrong, Steve, but uh, that's primarily due to the, the fans ha making their voice heard. Is that correct? Steve? Is he out here? Giannis? Yeah, I'm here. Steve? Steve is gone. Oh, no. He's gone. He's changing his tutu. Well, I will take over then. Yeah, um, can you? Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of fan support for the game. The game, very active social community, and even though it's been fairly abused over the past couple of years, uh, it's still going on, so... It's a very, very powerful effect that fans can have if they write and, and pay attention to uh, what's happening in the corporate world of things. And that's uh, and that's for a game that that is now what three, four years old. Yeah, it's an old, old, dated looking and everything else. But it's it's amazing how popular it's been considering it was actually never really marketed. Very word of mouth uh, community. So, uh, see you guys, it can work. You guys can do it. I mean, there's already a huge groundswell. The trick here, for, in my opinion, is to, there's a huge groundswell right now. Everybody's kind of raw. I mean, this game they were looking forward to is gone, and now everyone's going, ah, and this big shock value. But the trick is to keep it going. I mean, there's a great rise right now. It's going to spike. But if it just goes away, then it goes away. You need to get make your voices heard yeah, uh, sure. around the You're Internet. Expecting, you know, expecting exactly that. But everybody will get mad for a little while, and then people will forget. And... Uh Life goes on. Now, what's going to happen is if this is going on in two months' time, three months' time, that's going to get the attention of, uh, it's going to get the attention of Sierra, of course, but they've already made their decision. But they get the attention of another company, that's something different. Yeah, but, you know, I, I, if anyone out there is from another company who's thinking about picking it up, um, my advice would be move fast because, I mean, the reality is if you, if, if the team is going to stay together at all on this thing, we all have to start making some decisions about the rest of our lives, so to speak, and... I mean, I know I'm taking some time off, and I know Dan is, and, you know, everyone's situation is different, but the sooner we can get something together, the more likely you are to retain as much of the core of the team as possible. We lost some people, you know, when we moved up here the first time, and I think this time the, the potential for losing people is even greater. Uh, we've already lost one guy for sure, 100% gone, 
Um, and so, like I said, um, fast action is what we, we need. Yeah, time is against us on this one. Yeah, so uh, move now. Strike while the iron is hot before they disperse. So uh, thanks for your call. Do you have anything else to add to that? No, thank you. All right, thanks for calling in. Bye. Oh, chopped him off there. That's fine. We're, we're used to it. We've been talking about that all night. Hi, who's this? Yeah, this is Tommy. Hi, Tommy. How you doing? I'm doing just fine. How are y'all? Doing well. Where are you calling from? Um, I'm calling from Fritz, Texas. From Texas. It's a Texan kind of night. Oh, yeah. So you're looking forward is. to professional bull rider? Uh, no, I'm not, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, there's the core market, and they're already rejecting it. They're yeah. out of here. So, uh, what can we do for you? Well, um, this is kind of toward the, both the, the Middle Earth team and the Babylon team. Um, how, I mean, I got a question. I mean, how exactly... Uh, did they decide to cut these games? I mean, I hope it just wasn't some guy sitting behind the desk going, well, I need, uh, you know, a couple more dollars so I can buy a jacuzzi or something like that. Well, I don't think it was quite that, but it was probably a guy behind a desk who looked at the numbers and said these aren't acceptable to us. At least this is B5's case. Um, Middle Earth was a... I mean, we both were axed the same day. We both came from Oakhurst and everything else. We're in the same building, but our situations were quite different. Um, so, you know, honestly... It was, like we've been saying all night, it, it, as far as I can tell, it was just a business decision, but we aren't privy to the numbers or, or the analysis that they ran to come up with that conclusion. Yeah. And, and something else with this, uh, this reorg is is in some ways similar to the one they did earlier this year. It looks like Havas uh, Interactive and Sierra are just looking for ways to make the company profitable again. It's, uh, you know, we talked earlier about uh, the you know, rain under Sendent and how that just, you know, they sold a lot of games, but it wasn't profitable. So. It's looking like a, a cold business decision, and unfortunately, some cool games uh, took the brunt of it. I think if you pair it, if you pair it down to just Blizzard, eventually you'll have a pretty profitable company. <laughs> <laughs> Two games a year. Uh, no, sorry, one game. A, uh, sorry, one game every couple. Of, oh, oh, wait. <laughs> lots and lots of money. Lots and lots of money. So uh, that answer your question. Hello. Hello. You still there? Uh, no, this is not the one. This is not the one. Is it the other one? <laughs> Whoa. Ooh, heavy. I am not the one. <laughs> Don't make me destroy you. <laughs> okay, this, did we get another caller? Do we have an impersonator? Who's this? This is not the one. Okay. I then, uh, we're not going to talk to you. If you're not the one, I'm gonna, not going to talk to you. Uh, it's a nickname. Come on. I know. It's an Ebony If you're a you piece by fan, you'll know the reference. So. Paul's a dormant here. you got to get past him with <laughs> yeah. a shuffle before you can talk to the guy. Yeah, otherwise, we will make you do a William Shatner impersonation, and then you're just screwed. Yeah, What's up? Yeah, we'll be screwed. But anyhow, um, now, the question for Dan, um, when the game was originally planned, there was lower system requirements. I was kind of curious why a first version of the Babylon Finance game wasn't released at those system requirements and then be working on a second version of the game at this point. Well, when we originally conceived the game, you know, Sierra didn't have anything in the space combat market or hardly anything in really in the 3D. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we were looking to do was, you know, have, have a nice, a good B5 experience, but also to have a game that would uh, push the in industry further in the space combat genre. So we were ambitious in what we set out to do. And um, <clears throat> that's some of, the re some of the reason for the requirements got, they got pushed up a little. Although they didn't go up too far, they went up originally from I think it was a 156 to about a to a Pentium 200. So, not not too much creep on that. No, that's pretty amazing. Going down such a thing. Yeah, given the time that's passed, I guess that's really not that much. It just it just been a long time in coming. It just kind of seems that uh, maybe it was just time just to get something out and and not keep pushing for higher development. I don't know. It would have been. An Actually, an interesting option, and considering that we had set out to do an ambitious thing, we had plans to uh, pull back some of the more advanced features. As you know, we are kind of didn't go into all the details on some of the more elaborate things that we were hinting at, and that was one of the reasons is that it gave us the ability to cut things back at the end should they be taking too much time or budget. So, But we never really got a chance to discuss that or to, to look at those plans. Yeah, it, it, it was appears to be the hands. biggest problem was communication problems between <clears throat> development and uh, management. So, well, that was certainly an issue. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for the input. Sure. Thanks for calling in. All right. Bye bye. Okay, we got one more before the break. Cool. Hi, who's this? This is Brian. Hi, Brian. How you doing? Pretty good. Where are you calling from? 
Utah. Utah. So things going okay there? Yeah. Are, are you just crushed? <laughs> yeah. Are, are about Middle Earth. Earth. About Middle Earth. Uh, well, we've got Steve back on now, so. That's good. Uh, um, what do we got? Actually, I'm going to be hosting a, I got a couple of skilled people running a site called MEO Voice. It's actually started by Brian Cosgrove. He's in the um, chat room right now. But, Hello. Uh, I sent in an email, and we're just, um, want to keep in touch with the old developed team because, like you said, the um, part of the reason the realm sta has stayed alive so long is because I don't Steve and his developing team now just have a good way of talking to people and they're really like interactive with their fans and stuff. And so we just wanted to keep in touch with them and and uh, anyone else that's working on the new one or anything we can get really. You have our email addresses, correct? Yeah, I sent in um, an email to the game diver, the game dive at wand.net, but my email address is bean, B-E-A-N. Okay, everybody write this down. It's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, send me lots of mail. I, I get bored. Bean at basinonline.com. No, I just have to say that uh, I like that email voice site. Wouldn't you say so, Yana? She'd rather have you all those uh, all those nice petitions on there. It's a it's a fine fine gesture. I like it a lot. It's bean b e a n at basinonline dot com. And not b e i n b e a n. Not b not i and a. Was that dean like the dean of the university, or was that bean bean like green bean? <laughs> yeah, green bean. That's green gotcha. Bean. <laughs> Yeah, you'll eventually get it right there, uh, Nemoc. We'll, we'll get it going. Um, yeah, um, this is something we talked about just a, a minute ago as well as the uh, the consumer, or the, the fans, I should say, not the consumer. There's no game to consume, but the fan base keeping uh, keeping games alive, and this is, is one way to do it, is uh, make your voice heard and uh, and stay in touch. Yeah, and, and he uh, said he wanted to go off and kick Sierra's ass, I think was the... Quote. <laughs> he didn't say that. I think you're. I think you're mistaken. I, I think that was Dan Poy that said that. I just, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> but I think that's a good idea too, and just to stay in touch with Steve's development team and see what they do next, because anything they do, I know it's going to be interesting. Get a following suit of the other games. Well, if uh, if these guys are into it and, uh, and interested, I'm sure that uh, if they let us know here at the Game Dive what they're doing, what they're up to, and where they can be reached, we'd be happy to pass it on to the fans in the, the coming weeks. All right. All right. Well, thanks for calling Great. in. Thanks. Oh, man. So, yeah, we're talking to uh, the folks at <laughs> Sierra's Axe Festival. Nice. I'm, I'm liking these graphics you got going up here, Dan. This is a, a fine job this week, as usual. If you Thank can't you. see it, Steve, we have your uh, picture on the chopping block with the Axeman over you, uh, uh, from your new website. I see. Well, yes, I was quite scared when he was coming with that axe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it looks pretty spooky. The look right. on your face is great. It's kind of like, hmm, what? It looks a little dull, like he's going to have to swing it twice, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he's rub it back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> and those are real axes, too, aren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh man. man. Rub it back and forth while going, why won't you die? Why won't you die? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got some of the artwork. Great, you the... Uh, the Crayola. Uh, that was actually a real screenshot. We were trying a new, innovative uh, form of graphics. I think that uh, we would all have been pleased. A new Crayola well, engine. Yeah, it's the Crayola uh, trademark version. <laughs> now, this is stuff that uh, you'll find out on the web, and we do want to mention a couple of websites once again. First of all, everyone who's supporting uh, Babylon 5, the place to go to, uh, to vent, to get ideas, to sign petitions, to, to make let your, your voice be known. heard www.firstones.com. They are leading the charge, and uh, Drazi Guy from First Ones is largely responsible for, uh, for us getting in contact with all our guests because uh, their old email, it don't work for some reason. I, I don't know so, why. Uh, <laughs> we needed to get a hold of them, and he was able to accomplish the, that for us. The other place is www.spottedpony.com slash Seattle slash layoff slash layoff.html, where you're going to find such uh, excellent information as the real reason Middle Earth went down. I'm going to quote <laughs> a piece of that because uh, it's hilarious man i was busting a gut when i read this <laughs> oh who wrote this stuff <laughs> anyway. our old art director uh, john Bob, Bob. fine fine man uh, he is a fine fine man uh, here's one of the reasons he quotes is why you all had to be fired inner team conflict fights on the middle earth team were common and ugly steve was opinionated and bossy <laughs> daniel was a pompous know-it-all Giannis just wouldn't shut up john was anal retentive 
Steve poisoned Yana's coffee and Yana's put X lax in Steve's Coke. Daniel and John had several fist fights over the elven pointy ears issue, leaving Daniel with a bad knee and John with a hair lip. The artist <laughs> hated the programmers and the programmers hated the artists. A dysfunctional team like this just had to be let go before someone was badly hurt. Absolutely. Well, you know, I'm beginning to see Sierra's side of this now. <laughs> <laughs> unacceptable behavior. Yeah, Jonathan, don't let me see you again, man. Don't let me see you again. Better watch out. I mean, mess you up, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, that's some good stuff, and it's really nice that uh, you can actually have a sense of humor about all this, because uh, this isn't once but twice in six months for you. Well, you know, it's great fun. And you got to find your fun where you can. It's great fun, but somehow I don't know if I want to, you know, it's not like Disneyland. You tell me Disneyland's great fun, I want to go there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I want to experience the great fun. Yeah. yeah, I guess not. Those frequent flyer miles just aren't worth it, guys. <laughs> uh, it's geez. fun moving, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah well, <clears throat> one guy on our, on our project, actually, this is, um, well, he, he came on board about six, well, no, about a year ago now. So he's been through this twice now with Sierra. And his previous jobs, he had gone through the same thing, and he made some comment about it. He's actually made more money in the last three years off of severance and relocation money <laughs> than he has an actual straight salary. Sounds like a good racket. Yeah, it's good work if you can get it. Wait a minute. If you can't get it, if you don't have it any, wait. I'll figure this out. You guys uh, game to take one more call? Okay. Let's zap him in. Hi, who's this? Hi, this is Mary Weather. Hi, Mary Weather. How you doing? Oh, pretty good, except... Are you in mourning? Um, well... Yeah, <laughs> wearing hey, wearing black leather and, and even dyed my rat spot. So you, what can I say? Okay, you, you need to send us a picture um, of that so we can make you into a game dive bar fly. <laughs> well, I'm not going by your graphics, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I might have, you know, do something with that rat. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll try to but, uh, leave it alone. Do you have a question about uh, if anyone has, you know, any any clue what Codemasters is going to be doing? Having apparently taken what was left of, of Yosemite, um, you know, are they going to do some major updates on, on the realm, which heaven knows it could use, or what are they going to, anybody have any feel for what they're going to be doing on other games? Steve, you have a, or anybody have any insights on what Codemasters is doing? There hasn't been a lot in the, uh, the releases on this. No, not a thing. Well, I, I know I've talked to Craig Alexander, the, uh, I guess the, the man in charge over there, and also Mark Zekiel. They're, they're planning a few things. Of course, I'm not going to, you know, make their press announcements for them, but, uh, Certainly, they've got some interesting things they're doing, and I do believe that they want to upgrade the realm significantly. But uh, you know, there's certainly logistics there, but I think that that's what they want to do: give it, give it some new work, because yeah, as you said, it, it sure could need it. And uh, if you check the uh, the realm board on uh, on one dot net, uh, there was a, a posting earlier. I believe it was earlier today, maybe uh, late yesterday. I don't know. The days kind of blend. Um, giving kind of an idea of when a press announcement is going to happen, and I believe it's going to happen by the end of the week, where they're going to let uh, everybody know what's up with the uh, with the realm and uh, what else they're going to do. But they've been pretty tight-lipped so far. I'm not sure if it's because they they don't know what's going to happen yet, but uh, I get the feeling that the uh, Codemasters wants to support that. Otherwise, you know, it would have been much easier just to pull the plug. That's for sure. No, I think they're uh, I think they're going to make a run at it. But uh, don't quote me without the express written permission of uh, Major League Baseball. So uh, if sorry, you don't have quote Paul. You have to remember that he has no journalistic in integrity, and he lies frequently. I do. I frequently lie. In fact, this isn't even me. So uh, sorry, we don't have any more uh, information uh, as far as that goes. But uh, check the keep an eye on the message boards, and hopefully something will come up. So uh, sorry. Are you still there? Hello. She's gone. She was disgusted, which is pretty much usual for our listeners. So we got a few more minutes left here, guys. Um, uh, it's tough. It's, um, it sucks, actually. I'll get right down to it to see a couple games like this go. If there's a good part to all this, it's the tremendous outpouring from the fans, which I have not seen to this extent before. A lot of times we've seen games go down, and you're going to get some hue and cry. But, you know, Blizzard canceled Warcraft Adventures, which a lot of people are waiting for. I didn't hear word one not a compared peep. to this. Not a peep. They also so. canceled uh, Desert Fighters. Although it's not... <laughs> paying for a baby's new shoes, you got to be no. feeling pretty good about this. Oh yeah, it's it's been really great. I mean, it's nice to at least feel like you know, even if it if this is the end of it, that at least it went out with a bit of a bang, and that you know there were people behind it. I mean, it makes you feel like you're not just you know trying to make a game and kind of cast it off into the void and hope somebody buys it. At least we know that you know there were people out there who really cared about it. Amazing. And uh, Stephen Giannis, I've been looking at the message boards on the Middle Earth uh, site on Sierra's site, which. Uh, 
curiously still exists, whereas the Bab 5 one just zapped away and disappeared like that. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's gone. But I was in the forums there, and uh, there's just a, a huge hue and cry, which is about 99% bring them back. Yeah, that's amazing. Yep. I, th I think that the public has an interesting insight into what's happening, that uh, management lacks. It's, it's curious because uh, the hardcore fans thought you were going to the right place with uh, Middle Earth and management disagreed, which is their prerogative. Absolutely. But interesting, uh, perhaps um, maybe if a few more people from Middle Earth uh, make their feelings known, it'll be just interesting to see what, uh, what comes of that. It would be interesting. See how much of, uh, of the original idea survives in the, uh, in yeah. the rebuild. I'd have to guess, though, that that's one license that Sierra is not going to let go of unless you offer a, a disgusting amount of money. I doubt very seriously they'll, they'd even think about letting it go. It is a very viable license. Yeah, yeah. It's not going anywhere. It's, uh, it's quite amazing. Yeah. But there's always that, you know, outside ring of Earth sort of game, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Left Earth. <clears throat> yeah. Left Earth. Um, <laughs> outer Earth. <laughs> uh, floating away from Earth. So, um, yeah, there it is. Any uh, any other insights? Anything else you want to uh, to throw on, out here before we uh, grab another caller? Uh, boy, I don't know. Couldn't say much else, sadly. Not yeah. without screaming and, and crying. It would be terrible. Yeah, without uh, stepping over that edge. It's, um, right. it's been, a, been a tough uh, six months for you guys. And coming up from, from Elk Hurst and then uh, now going wherever. I mean, uh, well, let me throw this out. Are you guys hoping to, do you like Seattle? Are you hoping to stay up here or pining to go home to the Bear? No, I, I, I really kind of like it up here, um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm looking, I'm not going to shut down any opportunity no matter where it might be. Um, I could live pretty much anywhere. Fortunately, we haven't been here long enough to get that attached to the area, but I like what I see, and I'm perfectly willing to entertain you know, the idea of working here further. And winter's coming. Yeah, winter's nice here. Yeah, that's what I'm going to kind of like base my evaluation <laughs> on. I'm kind of waiting to get a month or two of that under my belt. And bad news for you, winter didn't end this year. <laughs> yeah, that's right here. Yes, uh, if you want mildew, you're in the right place. Got some. <laughs> Got mildew? A little baby powder will take care of that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think? Uh, if management didn't really care for where you were going with Middle Earth, do you see Middle Earth becoming another... EverQuest or another Asheron's Call sort of game. Do you think that's where they're going? Well, I, I can't make judgment on that. All I can say is that if, if they're going to aim for the, the more mass market, which, you know, they're prerogative, and I have to say that there is some sense to that. Um, but even so, if they, if they aim for that, it's definitely going to be a different experience from what we had envisioned, that's for sure. I don't know to what extent they're going to do what. Um, sadly, they don't give us that information. But oh, I'm really, uh, I'm really hoping they don't go to that first-person view that EQ has. That sucks. Well, there's there's definitely call for that. Uh, there's people that are interested in that within the organization. So first person is uh, is something that I think that you will find in the game. So. Someone described that as, uh, as as quake with elves. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I Everyone wants to be elves. Yeah, yeah. Quake with elves. I, I don't know if I want to play that game. <laughs> uh, no, because the bullets go right through. Use the hobbits as weapons. Uh, pick them up by the ankles and hit someone else with them. <laughs> kind of like midget bowling. Okay. So you guys game to take one more call? Oh, sure. sure. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring him on in, Dan. Hi, who's this? Hi, uh, this is Kevin. Hi, Kevin. How uh, you doing? Drazi guy. Hi, Drazi. Drazi guy. Thank Welcome again to for helping us pull this together. Uh, no problem. Very cool. You're uh, leading the charge for uh, Battle on 5. Yeah, I, uh, I really like doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously. Yeah. Uh, well, we're glad to provide you with the opportunity. Uh, oh. Well, maybe not glad. Yeah. <laughs> no, in fact, they're pretty bitter about the whole thing, but... Uh, yeah, you're leading this whole uh, uprising for people who want uh, Bab 5 to happen. And uh, everyone appreciates that. But, uh, what else you got to throw at us? Uh, well, uh, we're working on a few things right now. We're trying to uh, gather together all the different uh, fan sites out there. Okay. Right. And, uh, well, after that, I'm not too sure. I'm still trying to get some feedback from other people on the forums. Okay. Do you have uh, do you have any people at uh, Sierra Online or Havas that you're in contact with, or this is all uh, pretty much No, grassroots? I haven't gotten any responses from any people at Sierra. They seem to be ignoring me. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, it's the round file for all that. I tell you, it's terrible. Yeah, they're definitely filtering for B5 and Middle Earth at this point. Yeah, outrageous. Well, this out brings up the point I made earlier that, uh, yeah, they're going to filter this now because they know there's going to be a an initial outcry, but if it's still going on, if they're still getting this stuff, you know, a month from now, then they're going to start paying attention. And that's when I would pay attention. If this is still around, wait a minute. It's not just a, an initial shock factor. So. Either that or they'll start prosecuting. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Ah, uh, the ray of sunshine always. <laughs> no, Bringing it up faith, here. Sadly, I, my faith is gone. Yeah, I can't really blame you for that. Well, uh, thanks, Drazi. Yeah, no problem. And uh, come on and uh, talk to us anytime. Let it give us updates. Let us know what's going on with Fab Five and with anything else you're doing. Sure, I'll uh, I'll probably be back to the show next week. Oh, okay. Um, any uh, final words for these guys? Uh, no, just uh, drop by www.firstones.com for any updates, and uh, just do whatever you can. Try and fight the power. Fight the power. <laughs> fight, fight the good fight, oh, man. Right. Fight the good fight. <laughs> well, we appreciate all your guys' work. Thanks. No problem. Thanks, Kevin. All right, that was Drazi Guy. He helped uh, us get this whole show together. Um, I guess that's uh, we're about wrapping it up here. we got a couple of minutes left. Uh, last chance, guys. It's been a good time, but kind of a sad time. Yeah. Sorry and, to uh, see you. you know, I'm, I'm hoping that these guys hook up with another game company soon and we have them on to talk about their next game. Yeah, and uh, kind of go... <laughs> look who we did. Look who we did. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, I have faith that, you know, we've got a lot of really talented people, and whether we're working together or apart, you know, we're going to be making good contributions. So, you know, we're looking forward to just continuing with what we like to do. Yeah, success is the best revenge. Ooh, I'm going to write that one down. How about you, uh, Steve and Giannis? I think they suck ass. That's what I think. <laughs> there it is! We <laughs> have the quote! That's up all my feelings, I Okay, I, I win the bet. I said Steve would be the first one to lose the severance check. I win. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was, was that Steve or Giannis? It was neither one. It was that caller we brought in. That's it. That's been listening this whole time. We've been ignoring. <laughs> it said uh, they suck ass. <laughs> Maybe we should run a poll and see who is going to lose their severance check first. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> okay. It's been in two months when we've all been paid. There you go. Well, um, keep in touch, everyone, and uh, let us know what's going on. We'd love to have you back on when uh, something else is hopping. You can press your uh, or push your new games, and uh, where else you're going. It's, uh, it's been a good time. Thanks a lot for having us. See you Not a problem. I'm yeah, glad we could uh, let everyone know what's going on. All right, everybody, this has been the Game Dive with the Game Guys. I'm Paul. I'm Robert. And in the booth is Dan, Captain Nemuk. Wait, next week's show. Next week's show. Next week is huge, folks. Jane Jensen's coming on to talk about Gabriel Knight 3. Providing she still has a job. Providing she's still there. I'd love to know what you guys thought of this because, as we mentioned, Paul has found a bunch more vintage interviews that he did, including the developers of Age of Empires, as well as Planescape Torment, also Jane Jensen, who created the Gabriel Knight series, Kevin Eastman of Heavy Metal fame, uh, Valve, Tribes, it just goes on and on. So there's a lot of really cool stuff here if you like these kind of interviews. Please let me know down in the comments below. All right, guys, thanks for watching.